Hey, what's up YouTube? What's going on? In today's new video, what we're going to be talking about is why it's not a good idea to foam roll your lower back and why this is problematic and could actually trigger one's pain or symptoms to come on. So, to demonstrate guys, I have my foam roller right here. And now I'm just going to get into your typical position where you may see someone at a commercial gym just kind of foam rolling their back. So as I get onto the roller, as you can see right here guys, I am in lumbar extension and now I'm rolling my spine or I'm rolling my spine against the foam roller. First problem right there is someone with extension based back pain, this is going to trigger their symptoms. Maybe that's a pars fracture, maybe that's spondylolisthesis, maybe that's facet joint arthritis. That could trigger their pain or the onset of their symptoms to occur just by going into extension. Now, the problem with foam rolling our lumbar spine or our low back is if we were to just look at our body here, if we were to compare our hips to our, about our rib cage here where our rib cage ends, we have no support here for our lumbar spine. So when we foam roll, we're just hanging out on our lumbar spine. Whereas at the top here of our thoracic spine, we have our rib cage, we have our scapula, our shoulder plates to provide stability and support us. But when we foam roll on our lumbar spine, we don't have that same support. So we're just hanging on that lumbar spine. At the same time, we're gonna take our disc model here. And I'm gonna just move up to the camera, but when we roll, along our lumbar spine here. So this is our spinous process. And we apply sheer stress from our body weight and we roll up and down. We could create different micro movements in the lumbar spine. So we might have micro movements at the disc, maybe at the facet joints, and these micro movements can trigger pain or can trigger pain. So keep in mind guys, the annulus of the disc is triggered for pain. So when we create micro movements, that may trigger one's pain or symptoms. Same thing with the facet joints. We may get some pain triggered at the facet joints right here by doing that and creating those micro movements. Same time guys, someone with maybe a disc herniation that is impinging on maybe a nerve root here. When you apply pressure from a foam roller onto the, the lumbar spine here, you apply pressure from the foam roller and you roll back and forth, that could trigger one's symptoms as well because you may be applying more pressure onto that nerve or maybe pushing that disc more onto that nerve which may trigger one's symptoms. So that's not a good idea either or not a good thing or not something that one wants. Now, with all this being said guys, the, the real problem though is because of those micro movements that may trigger one's pain and when we consider athletes or individuals, we don't need any micro movements in the lumbar spine. We want to be stable. We don't want to trigger those symptoms from occurring that may occur. And this can be applied really to anyone with any kind of degenerative problems, the lumbar spine, maybe they have a disc herniation, loss of discite, uh, maybe some arthritis, the facets, maybe a pars fracture, whatever the case may be. But the point is, is that when you form the lumbar spine, you apply that sheer stress, you start to create those micro movements, which may trigger one's symptoms or pain, and we're creating instability in the lumbar spine, which athletes, or any individuals with a history of lower back issues or degenerative issues do not need. Now, when we consider more of an athletic population too, now let's say we have an athletic population, they may not be symptomatic, they may not have any symptoms, and they might not really show any degenerative changes, but maybe if we do like an, an MRI or something, or if they had an x-ray done, they may show some degenerative changes at the disc or at the joints just from their sport, but it's not detected or not really known. And that's just from getting, that's just from the exposure of being in their sport. So maybe in basketball, maybe it's in hockey, maybe it's in powerlifting. So they may have some degenerative changes that are not symptomatic, but if we start doing this foam rolling, we start creating that instability combined with the exposure with their sport, that's what could trigger some problems to occur. So that's why you should not foam roll the low back. And that's why it's not a good idea. And I just wanted to make this video to explain that, clarify it to anyone that may not understand or maybe a bit confused, or maybe you're someone that does foam roll your lower back to maybe consider this and to consider avoiding it. Because in my opinion, it's not the best idea for one to be doing this. So with that being said, guys, if you have any questions, comments, leave them below. And uh, we'll wrap it up for this video today. Hope you guys learned something and that's it. And until next time, take care.